hello guys welcome back to my channel and in this video i would like to do a really wholesome integral as we would say because it involves a lot of integration techniques that it's you know like we've discussed if you keep uh, watching my videos especially this playlist of trick integrals then you might have you might uh, know all these different integration techniques that we've come across throughout the playlist so let's get started and spoiler alert it has a really really nice result so let's get to it okay so for our purposes let's use the alphabet i to define the problem at hand which is integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x times sin x over x dx now you may think of using trying to use uh, integration by parts noticing that a natural log of x over x can be integrated but you will end up with a lot of divergence issues because we have infinity and zero two such values where the natural log will blows up to infinity and negative infinity respectively so we have to work slightly uh, smartly rather than you know just doing some elementary integration techniques so noticing the singular x in the denominator we are tempted to use Laplace transform and even the upper and lower bounds are in right form so there is this property if you have an integral from 0 to infinity of f of x multiplied with another function g of x dx that can be expressed as the integral from 0 to infinity of Laplace transform of any one let's take f of x and multiplied with the inverse Laplace transform of the other function dx so whatever variable you start in you end up with the same variable even after performing the Laplace transform usually Laplace transform takes us from a small f of t to a capital F of s here we start and end in the same variable because it doesn't matter what variable we have as long as the form of the integrand remains the same properties of definite integration so and before using this I would just like to simplify i using uh, exponential definition of the sine sine is e to the i x minus e to the negative i x over 2i so I have integral from 0 to infinity of e to the i x minus e to the negative i x bracketed off natural log of x over 2 i x dx now we can split this up into two integrals so 1 over 2 i as a common factor integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x times e to the i x over x dx minus integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x times e to the negative i x over x dx now now it's actually a right time to uh, start using the Laplace transform so I am saying that the numerator we we'll use the this property two times for both the integrals so f1 of x I'm saying let that be natural log of x times e to the positive i x and f2 of x let that be natural log of x times e to the negative i x and then naturally g1 of x is 1 over x and g2 of x is 1 over x so according to this formula and you know keeping the same labeling of functions we need to basically take the Laplace transform of this these two actually and the in inverse Laplace of these so um, the Laplace transform of this these two f f's is going to be a little work so let's do that on a fresh page so um, f1 of x is basically um, natural log of x times e to the i x right 
but we can use a certain shifting theorem that says if you have the Laplace transform of say some e to the a times t where a is any constant times some function of t that just becomes whatever Laplace transform we had for f of t separately that is going to be a function of s but that is shifted by a so you know whatever you have for a if a is positive then you'll have s minus a for the Laplace transform that you obtain so we're going to apply the same thing for f1 and f2 because it's just a difference of signs here here we'll be shifting by negative uh, by whatever if you obtain a f of s we'll be shifting by f of s minus i and here we'll be shifting by f of s plus i but for that f of t is natural log of t right we need to find the separate laplace transform of the natural log function so let's do that let's do a conventional laplace transform making the natural log of function of t using the definition integral from 0 to infinity of uh, e to the negative st times a natural log of t dt I want to do a quick substitution so let w equal to st such that dw is equal to s dt upper and lower bounds remain the same integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative w then the natural log of t will be natural log of basically w over s we, which we can decompose using properties is natural log of w minus natural log of s so natural log of w minus natural log of s and dt is dw over s now we can split these into separate integrals 1 over s outside first integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative w natural log of w dw minus natural log of s does not depend on w so take it outside integral from 0 to infinity e to the negative w dw and if you have really good experience in gamma functions this is gamma prime of 1 minus natural log of s this is gamma of 1 simply now I have made videos on gamma prime of 1 or you can say di gamma of 1 both have the same value in this case so this is going to be basically di gamma of 1 which I've made a video on you know like a separate video on negative Euler Mascheroni constant minus this gamma of 1 is 0 factorial which will be 1 natural log of s so finally taking the negative outside we have Euler Mascheroni plus natural log of s over s so that's basically the Laplace transform of natural log of t function so our f of s so as to say is minus Euler Mascheroni plus natural log of s over s and um, now f1 so basically f1 Laplace of f1 of x and as I said we start in the same variable we end in the same variable will be you know this thing but there will be a, a slight shift because with e to the i x so we have to basically subtract i from s all the s is wherever they are so we obtain minus Euler Mascheroni plus natural log of instead of s we end up with x right as I said minus i over x minus i that's f1 and for f2 we add i because we have a negative i shifting for the shifting theorem so minus Euler Mascheroni plus natural log of x plus i over x plus i and if you're concerned about g1 of x we have to find the inverse Laplace which was just inverse Laplace of 1 over x which is 1 
and the same thing for inverse Laplace of g2 because g1 and g2 of x were essentially the same function. So let's go ahead and, and plug all the information we know. Okay, so since our entire numerator now was our uh, the function that whose Laplace transform we needed to find. So let's just write it. Uh, we have 1 over 2i outside and a negative Euler Mascaroni plus natural log of x minus i over x minus i dx minus 1 over 2i. I am just distributing this the minus up front integral from 0 to infinity of Euler Mascaroni plus natural log of x plus i over x plus i dx and now if we are just to expand everything out we have negative 1 over 2i integral from 0 to infinity of Euler Mascaroni plus natural log of x minus i over x minus i dx minus minus plus 1 over 2i integral from 0 to infinity of Euler Mascaroni plus natural log of x plus i over x plus i dx and now why don't we just take all the Euler Mascaroni terms together and basically factorize an Euler Mascaroni outside so Euler Mascaroni over 2i are the common factors and then positive term first integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over since Euler Mascaroni was taken out we just have x plus i in the denominator minus 1 over x minus i and a dx that's the first Euler Mascaroni part and then the normal without Euler Mascaroni part which is 1 over 2i take that as a factor integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x plus i over x plus i dx minus integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x minus i over x minus i dx now we can actually fight for uh, a common denominator here so integral from 0 to infinity x minus i minus x minus i over x plus i times x minus i is x squared plus 1 that is just basic multiplication and the problem here is we can't evaluate these integrals separately because if you were to take the anti-derivative anti of this it's simple really it's natural log squared of x plus i over 2 you can do substitution but if you were to evaluate from 0 to infinity now there is a problem because this diverges and you know we basically deal with two divergent uh, integrals that's really bad so to basically avoid doing that let's just have a common denominator for these and let's just club them together under a common denominator so cross multiplying x minus i times natural log of x plus i minus x plus i times natural log of x minus i over x plus i times x minus i is x squared plus 1 like that with a dx that's the second integral I'm going to call this i1 because looking at it it requires special separate treatment meantime in the meantime let's just look at this so we've Euler Mascaroni over 2i integral from 0 to infinity x is cancelled out we have negative 2i over x squared plus 1 dx plus 1 over 2i times i1 well cancel the 2i's out we have Euler Mascaroni integral from 0 to infinity of dx over x squared plus 1 plus 1 over 2i multiplied with i1 this is easy we have Euler Mascaroni times inverse tangent of x evaluated from 0 to infinity plus 1 over 
2i times i1. Now for infinity we'll have a pi over 2. For 0 we'll have a 0. So pi over 2 minus 0 is pi over 2. So just but wait there's a negative right I forgot to write this negative. Negative and then we just write the pi over 2. Minus Euler Mascaroni times pi over 2 plus 1 over 2i times this annoying i1 that we still have to deal with. So this is our main equation and we are going to deal with i1 separately. And looking at this integral you might have may have realized and, and the denominator specifically the denominator that this actually calls for complex analysis. So you see there is so much to do just in this simple looking integral we already applied Laplace transform now we are actually you know going forward to do complex analysis so let's do that on a fresh page now see you there so for i1 whatever integrand we had you know let's just write i1 first avoid any confusion integral from 0 to infinity of x minus i times natural log of x plus i minus x plus i times natural log of x minus i all divided by x squared plus 1 dx okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a generalized complex function f of z with basically which is the integrand of this except instead of x we have a z because we are generalizing using complex numbers So this is f of z basically, fair enough. Now let's actually design a contour and don't worry it's not going to be any uh, bizarre contour like one of my previous videos with angle of 2 pi over 3 but it's going to be a regular contour with an angle of pi or a semi-circular contour. Uh, so this is basically what, what our contour is going to look like. So now this is the imaginary axis better to specify that this is what's called a zero this is the real axis and from origin to this point we have a distance r radius same thing here because it's a semicircle the radius is r okay that's our contour let's call the path from zero to r on, on this side basically positive side one and let's call this path and uh, this is called path gamma the semicircle so we're going to go from this point all the way to zero and then from zero to then this end and then we're going to curve back like this and we end up back at this point so it's a closed uh, contour so we can say that the closed close contour of f of z dz is equal to integral on the path 2 of f of z dz plus integral on path 1 of f of z dz. So we, we're going from this to this and then finally integral over path gamma of f of z dz, this semicircular path. Now, you know, in uh, all, all my previous videos, I used the estimation lemma to show that the integral over gamma is zero. But in this case, in this video, I'm not going to show that. I'm just going to say that it's going to zero because it's really a lot of work. This requires a lot of manipulation with triangle inequalities and stuff. And I'm not going to do that. It's going to make the video long. So this just assume goes to zero. And now, for path 1 let's parameterize so when you're on going from 0 to r on basically path 1 there is no imaginary component so z is equal to x so for path 1 the parameterization is integral from 0 to r this way of f of x dx okay and plus and when you're on this path, you're going basically from 
r to 0 but z is equal to negative x now so f of negative x and then accordingly dz will be negative dx so that will we'll have a negative dx and this is already 0 so now notice that if if you look at f of z in place of z if you put x or you have a real integral variation of that that is basically equal to our i1 right provided you take the limit as r goes to infinity which will we will take because we are taking this limit in this estimation lemma too so it makes sense to apply the limit on this so basically integral from 0 to infinity of f of x dx and then because of the negative outside we can flip the uh, basically interval so 0 to infinity now of f of negative x dx plus because we took the negative inside and now this is just i1 so all we are left to do is in integral from 0 to infinity of f of negative x dx plus i1 that's equal to our contour integral now let's just play with uh, f of negative x and somehow make it equal to a variation of i1 so you take f of x but in place of x you put in negative x so doing that we obtain so uh, you know making that substitution we obtain minus x minus i natural log of minus x plus i minus minus x plus i natural log of minus x minus i and the denominator will remain as it is because minus x the whole thing squared is just x squared plus 1 and no need to take a negative dx because we already compensated that negative outside here so regular dx and we have an i1 don't forget so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take suck out the negative from this and then pull the negative inside here. So writing positive terms first, we'll have x minus i. And then I want to write this as basically the inside part as natural log of negative 1 times x plus i. We just factored out a negative 1. And then minus x plus i, we sucked out the negative, natural log of minus 1, we factorize out x minus i over x squared plus 1 dx plus i1. And now we can natural log of a times b is equal to natural log of a plus natural log of b. So we can do that but natural log of negative i or negative 1 is i pi because negative 1 is e to the i pi. So uh, making that substitution integral from 0 to infinity of x minus i and uh, we have i pi plus integral uh, plus natural log of x plus i this basically split up into natural log of negative 1 plus natural log of x plus 1. Similar thing on this side we have i pi plus natural log of x minus i divided by x squared plus 1 dx plus i1. Fair enough. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically multiply only the um, i pi with whatever is outside the bracket. So we have integral from 0 to infinity of i pi x then minus minus i times i pi is just positive pi and then this these pi terms so minus i pi x plus pi again divided by this denominator that's unchanged dx and then th just take all the other part you know without the pi's in, in it 
basically a natural log part in a segment integral from 0 to infinity of x minus i natural log of x plus i minus x plus i natural log of x minus i over x squared plus 1 dx plus i1 but what is this exactly i1 itself so the i pi x's will cancel out so we have 2 pi integral from 0 to infinity of dx over x squared plus 1 and then i1 plus another i1 will make 2 i1's and this is easy so 2 pi inverse tangent of x from 0 to infinity plus 2 i1 this will be pi over 2 so 2 pi times pi over 2 plus 2 i1 so all we obtain for our contour integral of f of z on this semicircular contour is basically pi squared plus 2 times i1 now let's use residue theorem to figure out what this contour integral is equal to okay so right here i've written an expression for f of z so what are the points where this f of z becomes undefined basically the denominator becomes zero so those happen at z equals i and z equals negative i but we only need to take those points that are inside our contour that's one of the principles of the using the residue theorem on contour integrals so our contour was like this z equals i is one unit on the imaginary axis so if this is the imaginary axis i is here and the negative i is you know in a downward direction one unit from on the imaginary axis but i is inside the contour so we forget this we just take this as the residue so now how do we find the residue so residue of f of z at z equals i can be found out as limit as z goes to i of z minus i times f of z so basically just cancel out the factor because z squared plus 1 can be factorized out as z minus i and z plus i so that in this in the denominator and this in the numerator these two things will cancel out and in the end we just get limit as z goes to i of uh, z minus i the original one on the numerator natural log of z plus i minus z plus i natural log of z minus i and since we cancelled out this factor we just have z plus i in the denominator now splitting this up properly in limit as z goes to i z minus i natural log of z plus i over z plus i minus limit as z goes to i of these two things will cancel out so natural log of z minus i and now as z goes to i we have natural log of 2i and 2i in the denominator but this i minus i will go to zero making this entire thing go to zero so finally we just have this expression limit with a negative z goes to i natural log of z minus i now i would just quickly like to multiply and divide by you know if you again if you want to plug in i you'll have natural log of zero which is basically diverges to negative infinity and this negative will make a positive infinity but let's take a slightly different approach natural log of we have z minus i i'm saying divide by z and multiply by z we'll have to use log properties then we have limited z goes to i of natural log of if you divide 1 minus i over z plus and minus minus limit as z goes to i natural log of z now it seems we can definitely use the taylor series here limit as z goes to i of negative sum from k equals 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the k plus 1 over k and minus i over z 
to the k and this will be natural log of i if we substitute and natural log of i is i pi over 2 because i is e to the i pi over 2 using Euler's formula okay now if, if we substitute i here we'll have minus 1 to the k this minus 1 to the k and this will cancel out we will have minus 1 to the 1 with this minus will cancel out so we will just have sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k minus i times pi over 2 so this is the harmonic series which we know diverges and we have an imaginary factor but what is this this is this is the only residue we had so we can say this is equal to the sum of all the residues since this was the only residue we can write it this way but by uh, by formula of residue theorem contour integral of f of z dz on a closed contour is equal to 2 pi i times the sum of residues enclosed inside the contour we obtain the sum of residues right it's sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k minus i times pi over 2 now multiply everything we'll have the 2's will cancel in this case i squared and a negative will cancel we just have a pi squared plus 2 pi i times sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k that's equal to our contour integral of f of z dz but we actually know what this thing equals to right we calculated this to be pi squared plus 2i 1 that is just equal to pi squared plus 2 pi i times sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k pi squared cancel out so i1 is basically pi i times sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 over k but wait i1 was a real integral right it was basically f of x it wasn't even z there wasn't even a z in it. it wasn't even a complex function it was a real function going from basically this 0 to this endpoint r which we tended to infinity so it was always defined on a real axis so a real valued function integrated on a real axis will always give us a real value but since there is only imaginary stuff that blows off to infinity I mean we don't care that it blows to infinity it's enough that we have an i here and it's actually thanks to this i that we are not concluding that this becomes infinity it's because this can be written as 0 plus i times sum from k equals 1 to infinity of pi over k so even though the imaginary part is blowing up to infinity it's like saying 0 plus i times infinity but we will still take the real of this right the real part of this because i1 is real so taking that into consideration i1 is nothing but 0 I mean it doesn't matter what the imaginary part does in this case it's blowing to infinity it might be 0 it might not be 0 but we just ignore it you know it's almost thanks to this 2 pi i factor this magic factor of 2 pi i that we could actually con have an i in front of this diverging harmonic series making it become totally imaginary this is completely imaginary and because of which we basically ignore it because our original i1 is a real valued integral that's why it should have a real valued uh, value as, as as a result so that becomes 0 so i1 is nothing but 0 and now let's go ahead and substitute this back into our main formula for i okay so let, let's plug in i1 now we have minus Euler mascheroni times pi over 2 plus 1 over 2i times i1 was nothing but 0 all that complex analysis for just a 0 but you know that's the right way of actually showing this becomes 0 not by cancelling out stuff taking two divergent integrals and stuff so this goes to 0 so our integral i is nothing but minus Euler mascheroni times pi over 2 okay so that's this is one way of doing it I call it the long way the wholesome way 
where you actually see all different processes of integration that we've learned, the non-elementary uh, processes uh, come into play, namely Laplace transform, complex analysis, residue theorem and all that. But uh, my viewers, I have a little surprise for you. You know, like I do a shortcut method. This is a shortcut ingenious method. I mean, this just struck me one day while I was brushing my teeth and, and the rest is history. Anyway, so um, we have to calculate this, right? So let's just take a step back and forget this for now. Let's consider I naught this is integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x divided by x squared plus 1 dx and if you check out my uh, hunting woodland beasts video this is actually the first integral I do there and I show that this is equal to 0 you can use trigonometric substitution the denominator will cancel out then you'll have integral from 0 to pi over 2 of natural log of sin x minus natural log of cosine x both of them have an identical value of minus pi over 2 times natural log of 2 you can show that both of them are equal by using the symmetry uh, and, and complementary angles for a pi over 2 and make them cancel and you end up with 0 okay fair enough so if you if you still don't understand what why this is 0 if you want to know please check that video out hunting woodland beast okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this property if you have integral from 0 to infinity of f of x times g of x dx I'm going to just use the Laplace transform property take say the Laplace transform of one function and the inverse Laplace transform of the second function dx I'm going to use this property so in our case this is going to be our f of x natural log is going to be our f of x and this denominator is going to be our g of x so g of x is 1 over x squared plus 1 so that you obtain f of x times g of x form so i naught is going to be integral from 0 to infinity of Laplace of natural log of x times inverse Laplace of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx but doing that does not change the value of the integral which is still equal to 0 okay now we, we I told you the formula of the Laplace transform of the natural log so we have a negative outside Euler mass Coroni plus natural log of x over x as I said we start and end in the same variable because even the final variable of integration after applying these transforms is x with this noticeable by this dx and the inverse Laplace of 1 over x squared plus 1 you can look up a table is happens to be sine of x dx as it is it, but this is still equal to 0 I'm not changing any values okay now let's split these up into separate integrals so we have integral from 0 to infinity of minus Euler Mascaroni times sine of x over x dx minus integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x times natural log of x over x dx which is still equal to 0 so now rearranging everything this implies that integral from 0 to infinity of natural log of x times sine of x over x dx is just equal to um, whatever this thing was minus Euler mass Coroni taken out integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x over x dx but wait this is just the i we wanted right this is i is equal to minus Euler mass Coroni times this is just the Dirichlet in integral right and I've done this using two techniques you can again use if you want uh, our technique of Laplace transforms see integral from 0 to infinity of uh, Laplace transform of sine x if you please and inverse Laplace transform of x 1 over x rather dx you do that you get minus Euler mass Coroni times integral from 0 to infinity this will become 1 dx over 
x squared plus 1 this is minus Euler mass Coroni times pi over 2 so there we have it that's a very quick and ingenious method and why I find this integral particularly fascinating that is because we touch infinities in two cases one was in the long method in the residue theorem the imaginary part is going to infinity although the real part is zero and in, and in the second place with this Euler mass Coroni constant with elementary techniques you would have come to the conclusion that this integral entirely diverges but it's not the case because this is quite tricky the Euler mass Coroni constant is quite tricky to handle frankly because it's harmonic series until n terms in the limit as n goes to infinity minus na natural log of n so it's basically a difference between two diverging uh, quantities so natural log as n goes to infinity is diverging to infinity so is this harmonic series so their difference basically or it's surprising that all of their difference is turning out to be a finite constant which does not diverge so that's why you using elementary integration techniques you may feel that this integral is diverging but it's not the case it's because of the elusive uh, divergent the elusive nature of the Euler mass Coroni because it's obtained because of two diverging things so it's like two negatives will make a positive like that thing here going on it's really rare when such stuff happens in math but it's really nice so that's basically the value of the integral and in case you want approximations I'm ready to do that so this is approximately negative 0 0.8 9882536 so that's an approximate value and it's beautiful because we have two transcendental numbers like pi and uh, the Euler mass Coroni constant so that's why this integral was actually worth mentioning on my channel so that's it then for this video so please like share and subscribe to my channel guys recommend me to your friends I really need more subscribers uh, you can follow me on Instagram gamma underscore diagamma in the meantime stay home stay safe continue enjoying and doing more math and uh, peace out